Just follow the camera in three, two, one. All right, let's do it again. You ready? No battery, okay, cool. Let's go, let's go. Oh, nice, nice, well done. Well done, check this out, check this out. How you like that? I didn't see anything. You would never guess what I have in my hands right now. The R5C, let's see if I can get that in focus. There we go, the red shutter button, the big booty, the articulating screen in the flesh in my hand. And yes, I'm telling you right now that I believe that this, in my opinion, is a red Komodo budget camera and possibly a Netflix approved camera to be. Why would I say something so crazy? But before I give you that answer, let's go to day one testing shoot. What's up everybody, my name is Galston Anthony, the best to ever do it and guess what I have on the field today? I got the R5C, can y'all see it? If you can't, that's okay, that's okay. The R5C, and it looks pretty cumbersome today, but I'm gonna talk about the cumbersome and ergonomics a little later. But today, I'm gonna be filming him. Nico over there is the guy, the guinea pig, the coach for the day. All right, let's get straight to it. You ready? Now that was a combination of 8K and 5.9K cropped at 60 frames per second. Everything was done on a manual lens, the Rokinon 24 millimeter. That was the only lens that I used so that I can crop in with a 5.9 so it doesn't look so odd and so wide when I'm trying to do a close-up shot. But the ergonomics of this camera kind of bothers me a little bit. Although the camera is a little bit chunkier than I expected it to be before I actually got the camera, it is annoying because I had to take the Shinobi, the Adamus Shinobi, and put it kind of like at the bottom because the screw, tripod screw, is only at the bottom, but I don't have that at the top. Well, this electronic shoe, they call it a hot shoe. I'm not really sure what they call it. This can put the test cam on it, so it would be kind of cumbersome. And the monitor over here, which I found actually particularly annoying, is the fact that the waveform does not move from the mini HDMI right until the Atomos. And I'm assuming the zebras don't, although I did not use that. But you guys let me know because I try to put this in the harshest conditions possible, right into the sun, see what the dynamic range can do. Unfortunately, I couldn't try the autofocus because I didn't have a extra battery, you know, port extension, power bank, whatever they call it. I did not have that, so I did everything manual. So if it's off focus, forgive me. So what y'all thought about the footage? I did the whole run and gun situation. Turn on the camera, switch it to 8K, 60 frames per second, 12-bit raw, yes, raw. And I won't go down the list of the specs because there's so many other channels that have the whole specs ready for you. But I could tell you that the footage, from my opinion, came out pretty good. But I wanna know what's your opinion. Please pause the video right now, subscribe, and give me comments down below what y'all think. But before I really, really, really get into it, I want y'all to know that this camera, yep, this big boy over here, runs through batteries like AMG runs through gas. I'm telling you right now, this camera is very disrespectful to batteries. I just shot 30 minutes and boom, the camera is off. And guess how many batteries I had that day? Yep. Canon South Africa, I really appreciate you giving me this loan unit. It's really great. I actually have it for like three, four days. But please, for the love of goodness, get me an extra battery. What is the purpose of filming with such a camera? Well, to use it as a cinema camera, because that's what the C stands for in R5C. But for you to use it at its best potential, like that of a C70 and a C300 Mark III, like the red Komodo, you have to purchase so many accessories for it to work. But because I couldn't remember everything at the top of my head, I had to just make some notes. So first you will need the monitor, the test cam XLR, cage, Canon approved external power battery for 8K60 to work, which I found pretty annoying, two 512CF Express cards, at least 10 batteries, variable ND filters, and I'm not including the lenses here and the matte boxes. It will be about $7,000 
from 4500 of just purchasing the body. Whew, that's quite expensive. Or you could actually just snap on an RF lens and film, but you will not get the best out of this camera. But what are the annoying factors about this camera? Well, C-Log2, mini HDMI, no filters, and IBIS. They are legitimate except for IBIS because who buys a cinema camera to have IBIS? It is unnecessary for, at least for me, to have IBIS in it. However, it does have the electronic stabilization and I do not use that. Neither if I need some form of stabilization, I'll buy a gimbal or just try to get my hands as steady as possible. Now, dynamic range is the talk of this camera. What do y'all think about the dynamic range? All right, so I hit James Jackson up from James Jackson Phil in Philadelphia and I asked him, look, what do you think I should do with the R5C? What should I test? Him and a few other people said, check out the dynamic range. I don't really want to do the dynamic range test because I felt there's too much pressure on me because I cannot find a scientific way to prove the dynamic range is as claims. So what I decided to do is take this out in the real world and see how does it work. So you guys be the judge of it. All these clips might be out of focus because I'm not very experienced at, you know, focus following and whatnot, but I did my best. You let me know what y'all guys think. my opinion the dynamic range is just fine no it is not the best say comparable to the c70 komodo c300 and so forth and so forth but that high resolution sharpness distracts me from realizing that this camera's dynamic range is not in the top tier Another side note, it is quite typical of Canon to give you what they think works for you and you gotta deal with it. It's like the Japanese out there, you're, you gonna take what we give you because we say it from diaphragm. Get it? Japanese accent, no? Well, there's so many factors that are very welcoming for me in the R5C. And one of the big factors is the fact that when you switch the switch to the video mode, it gives you entirely what I'm used to. As an owner of a C300 Mark III, you have the whole menu of the C300 in a small form factor camera and that, that kind of is cool for me because it makes me feel like I can take this camera, sort of kind of replace it in some instances with the C300 Mark III, if not make it a B cam. So it's definitely a welcome. But there were some annoying factors about it. The fact that the waveform, zebras and whatnot could not go through HDMI on the other side and that was a little bit annoying for me but hey I had to deal with it some way somehow. Now how would I categorize this camera? My personal view is more of a C200 stripped down version as opposed to a C70. Why C200 stripped down? Simply because it does not have the ND filter that's the stripped down factors but it has a similar dynamic range as well as the factor that it does not have C-Log2 only after interpretation in filming RAW. The C70 is too much of a greater camera because it has that DGO sensor with 16 stop of dynamic range. So I don't really think it's quite, you know, a camera from a same similar descendant. But I would say that C200 and R5C are very much related. Now, if the R5C could film 4K 120 12-bit RAW, I'd be like, okay, let's put it more towards that category. But unfortunately not, it only films at 10-bit 422. And I would have loved to see 120K RAW. Now, who is this camera for? Well, from my opinion, you could use this for various types of work, so I cannot categorize it for a certain group of people. In my books, in fact, I feel like it will be a goat of all cameras because it is a great hybrid camera. So if you want to actually impress your clients with an 8K resolution type camera, if you want to do FPV drones or maybe even put it on a gimbal for really quick shots, 
If maybe you own a C300 Mark III or C500 Mark II and you do not want to carry this cumbersome case all over where you're traveling and you just want to take a little camera, this one is for you and various different types of work too. I'll never doubt that this is a do it all kind of camera. However, I can tell you who this camera is not for. If you think you got $4,500 and you just want to purchase the camera, you got to think twice about that because if you can't afford to get like the CF Express cards, at least two of them, which are ridiculously expensive or have some hard drive space or have a fast enough computer to handle the 8K, then there's no need to purchase this camera for its 10 bit 422. I'd rather say go for something like an R6, which is a whole lot cheaper and can get that type of work done pretty much as good as this one and for the love of goodness please hit the subscribe button make comments hit the like button so that i can continue making this content for my beautiful people and until next time it's peace out